Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Natik in Elk Grove, California at natikyarns.com, coming to you live on this slightly chilly here in Northern California Thursday. Um, we have a very exciting video for you guys this morning because we have a brand new finished project out of a gorgeous Noro yarn. Stop trying to steal the purple, Susan. <laughs> No, you can't have it yet. Later. I want it. Later, my friend. We have to talk about prizes first. Prizes so are exciting. We have to talk about our awesome grand prize, give away one of our daily prizes, and then we can dive into the scrumptiousness. Not that the prizes aren't also scrumptious. I know, I rather like the one, today's I prize. Know, I almost went... Nobody saw that. <laughs> I squirreled it away. I had a skein of that. In yeah. The stash. I made a cowl out of it. So for the grand prize, we have two beautiful skeins of yarn. One is Art Yarns Merino Cloud in a pretty soft cobalt blue. And the other, we're pretty sure it's just an old dye lot batch of smushy prickly pear. We finally settled on that that was it because Jess's is the wrong ply. So this is definitely Dream and Color Smushy in the gorgeous prickly pear colorway, just a little brighter dye lot than normal, but still gorgeous. And so with these two beautiful skeins, you have enough to make the large size of our vicarious cowl, which Fun fact is a species of tulip because we'd originally designed it out of this tulip field, I think was the name of it, colorway that was an Inspirations Club color from Art Yarns. Darla, you cracked me up. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Behave, kids. I need two hands to do that, and I can't do that motion, so, you know. <laughs> Actually, I'm my mm, wrong character. <laughs> so with these two skeins you have enough to make the larger infinity size or you could make two mediums the world is your oyster uh, but really fun pattern where you have a stripe that is chevron ribbing with a center double decrease and then make ones and then you have a stripe that is just like three rows basically one, you wrap each stitch twice, and the next row you drop the extra wraps to create this kind of la sideways ladder effect. And it's not enough rows to throw off your chevron pattern. So that one, how you get entered into our grand prize drawing. Every time you make a purchase from Natik, you get one entry. It's cumulative, so if you purchase three times, you get three entries. If you purchase 10 times, you get 10 entries. And it includes all purchases made here in the store, online at natikyarns.com, and even over the phone with us. So you have lots of ways to get entered. our game prize. Good morning, everyone. I know, Shelly, it is a very fun pattern. And if you guys don't want a cowl, but want more of like one of our convertible wraps, Fuchsia Meadows uses the same technique. And I know Eileen can vouch for it because I think she's made like four of them. Wow. Thank you. At the end, I'll talk about the sweater that I'm wearing but it was a very fun knit. So for the daily prize, we have our pattern Jostle, which pairs well with basically any worsted weight yarn. It can be Rios, it can be Classy Cashmere, it can be mini skeins, Noro, self-striping, variegated. It all plays well because it's just a simple seed stitch pattern. So it's really just to get a nice texture and show off the beautiful color. This is the kind of pattern you pick when you're just like, I love this skein and I don't know what to make out of it. It's just confetti in a cowl, right? 
So this is a beautiful variegated color of like, it's like muted Lisa Frank because you have mm, yeah. rose and violet and cornflower and mint and sunshine yellow oh. and like a sherbet orange all in one happy skein. This skein is enough to make the small or medium size. And how you get entered into our daily drawings. Is interacting with our videos. So if you react with any of these lovely bubbles down here, then you're going to get one entry per bubble. Then if you comment on the video, like lots of you are already doing, um, then you get five entries per comment. And then if you want the most entries per click, then just share our video with this arrow in the corner to your stories, to your friends, you can send it privately in Messenger, you can copy the link, you can share it in a group, wherever you share, just come back and do a separate comment per share. So like I'll be shared to my stories, shared to my page, and then you get 11 entries per share. And then we come over to our handy dandy comment picker and see who the lucky winner is. Lisa Savi, congratulations. That'll be a fun one for her. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Lisa, we know you're local. Next time you come in the boutique, you can let us know you have a prize in the cabinet and we will get it out for you. And it's already wound, so no waiting. Cast on right away. If you win and you're not local, just let us know in the notes you have a prize and we will include it in your shipment. Hey, there's a little cute little bear hiding in here. That's a kitty cat. Kitty cat? Yep. Yep. It's kept back so you can't see yeah. Very pettable. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, I forgot how soft they are. I like that minky fabric. Congratulations, Darla. She figured out how to share. Awesome. And you had the character name right. We still have this adorable sparkly pouch, everyone. Consuela. Easy to clean. There's the tag. And it's so sparkly. I kind of want to pair it with like, I think it'd be the cutest little gift to do like that. And some stitch markers in there, a skein of that gorgeous blue heron from yesterday. Oh, sparkle like, package. Just give them a glitter <laughs> kit. It's like speedboat sparkly. Don't worry, Meg, I'm working on it. <sighs> You'll get a glitter kit eventually. <laughs> okay. So, do I show our finished project first, or a skein of the yarn? I think the project. That's kind of what I was thinking. So let me pop the link in there for it. I love the texture on this pattern. I know, it's so cool. So we just finished this gorgeous origami scarf from Noro Yarns. It's nice and big. You can wrap it around lots of different ways, but look at this beautiful texture. It's like a three-dimensional, like this is why they call it origami. It kind of looks like it folds in here and then comes forward there. And it's all, like, it's not really doing that. It just looks that way. Cause there is like this ridge that you see here is right here on the opposite side. So it's how the decreases and increases are being placed that it makes it look like it's this folded three-dimensional amazingness. So this is the origami scarf. It was done with 720 yards of worsted weight yarn in the scrumptious Kashi Rukuru. And of course, because we did the sample out of this color, now we are out of this color because everybody wanted it. 
trying to get, oh, that's getting more accurate in the color. It's still a more true green than what I'm seeing. It's kind of an emerald green. Yeah. The close-up really washes it out, but I wanted you to see the pattern. And this is only four skeins of the yarn, which I will link and pin for you guys because now I can show you all of the beautiful yarn that this was knitted out of. And it's definitely reversible. Yeah, 100% reversible. If you don't like a wide scarf, you could do two skeins and do half as many stitches, and that's still a good width scarf for more of a lightweight accessory. So I think it'd be really fun for here where we're not as cold, although lately we kind of are. Today was cold. Um, that you could do like a half width scarf out of just two skeins instead of four. Ooh, make it wider and into a convertible. Oh yes, there oh, is snuggly. A, like an origami shawl version if you don't want to do the math and want to know what you need for the bigger size. Somebody's already done it. So we have first up the gorgeous color number seven, which is like a navy blue. You can see like these darker, almost black flecks in it. So it gives it some really good depth to the color. This yarn is 180 yards per skein, 40% silk, 30% wool, 20% cashmere, 10% polyamide. So that little bit of cashmere, that 20% makes it super soft. The silk also makes it super soft and gives it really good structure. Silk in single ply yarns is amazing because silk has what they call a long staple length, meaning each individual fiber is rather long. So it gives the yarn more structure because those are overlapping more often. Some fibers have very short little staples. I don't know why they call it a staple. I was just thinking that. I'm, I could research that later and go down a rabbit hole, I'm sure. Yeah. But it, the shorter ones don't overlap as much, therefore they're not as sturdy, so the silk makes this a much more durable yarn. Yeah, Shelly definitely, knitting it half as wide is perfect for here. Because that's still like a six inch scarf. Yep. That's still plenty of scarf. Yep, Darla, that's where we were last night. We were in the, I think we were at 35. Ooh. Okay, then we have the one that Susan was trying to steal. Um, color 24. You put it closer to me. Look, she put it on my hand. That was How am I supposed to resist that? I figured you'd be less likely to steal <laughs> it if you were already touching it. That was my thought process. Is it working? Yeah, for now. That's so pretty. It's got the little dark flecks in it as well. That one is very pretty, like true violet. There's so much dimension in that color. The colors are almost like gemstones, the way they did that like darker shade, kind of almost like a subtle tweed in there. It's like, it gives it that shimmer in the depth of color. So I do have some really fun projects that we can do out of this <clears throat> yarn. Uh, I, it's so funny. This morning, I went looking for projects and I went to the search initially and it goes to best match by default. And we usually change it to like hot right now or most projects so we can see the things that we know pattern's been tested because lots of people have made it so it's good so I just started to click away from the best match and had to go back because this sweater is super cute this is cliffhanger by Heidi Kiermaier uh, which she does really good sweater patterns um, they're always really well written and so this one is super new of hers it's from this month there's 24 projects which means test knitters have done it and it's got this beautiful like garter rib texture on the top and the collar. 
down the shoulder seam into the sleeves and then on the bottom you can do it like I would do it shorter on the bottom like half as much because I think that gives more of an elongated look for those of us with short torsos but that texture carries around to the back it's just a really cute pullover and this one comes in sizes from a 33 and a half through a 71 and a half. So she has left nobody out except for the kids. And I was gonna see if it breaks down the yardage for you. Oh, here you guys go. So 935, which is only like five skeins for the smallest size up through 2025 for the 71 and a half which is, I think, 11 skeins. But I just, this one was like, oh wait, go back. That is so cute. Then if you want a quick project, this Streets of Stromness by Laura Ayler is really fun. That's cute. It's just like, changing size blocks of reverse stockinette and stockinette so it's like this diminishing basket weave it's tetris only smaller right? it's like they all fell yeah. down into place now i would kick off the rolled edge on this one like this one ends in ribbing right here so i would just right just bind off bind off after the ribbing and on this side, I would just do a little, maybe like garter stitch first, so it doesn't detract from the wider blocks down here. Oh, right. But keeps it from rolling. I just think it's so fun, that like diminishing blocks, because it does, it makes like those little L shapes mm -hmm. and squares. You could almost do like three rows of pearl on the bottom. Yeah. Start that way and opposite. then it would, yeah. Mm -hmm. Really and that cute. One's only two skeins. Okay, more colors. Um, yes, Maria, that one would actually be really easy to modify into a hoodie. You would just take that collar and knit it the length you need for a hoodie, and then seam it across the top. You could do some decreases in the middle if you want it to have more of a rounded back, but lots of hoodies have the point. So the point is the easy way because you don't have to think about how to adjust the stitch pattern. There's a pun in there, but I'll be good. Then we have the gorgeous color 84, which is almost Danielle's beet pink. It's a little bit redder than the beet pink, very um, like raspberry kind of color. You're right, Darla, it is an Escher piece. Yeah, the cowl. Yeah. So we are now entering the Danielle section of the color palette. Because the next one is this gorgeous, this one's Lisa Frank pink. This is 102. It's that pretty, like, slightly blue pink, but it's that bright hot pink. bubble gum on hyped up energy that bubble gum pink yeah it's it's like the bubble gum pink without that you know how it always has that white powder on that yeah so it's, it's like if you didn't put the white powder on it that's probably what the pink underneath looks like it's probably cornstarch just to make it not yeah. stick to the wrapper when they mold it in there i don't know how they wrap bubble gum that's a, a i'm sure we need a, of how it's made exactly we have to do research later. Right, like we're finding lots of rabbit holes to go down this morning. Oh, okay, I think you can also find if the oh, computer. I, I, it drives me nuts when it does that. Let's refresh the page. All fixed. This really cute hat that happened to be in our library oh, nice. by Jared Flood. It was clearly in a couple different issues of Interweave Knits, which is a magazine that's no longer around. Um, it's one of Brooklyn Tweed's patterns, but it's this really cute, like, essentially what they refer to as a traveling cable, but it's just a little one-by-one -one Bavarian cables, which means knit through the back loop to give them that extra three-dimensional look pop that you get there. 
And these are easy to do because they're just kind of like doing a decrease. You don't have to have a cable needle. Very fun. A little ribbing and then this gorgeous pattern and it's even got the pattern worked in really cool to create this like star shape at the top as you finish it off. And you can see it's knitted to be more of like a beanie fit, but if you want it more of a slouchy fit, you just knit it longer before you go to the decreases. Like this one as written only takes one skein and has some wiggle room in the yardage to make it taller. Like you could probably make it two inches taller, easy, and still be within one skein. Then here's one for Susan. This is the Arroyo shawl. I have done that one. Have you? I have. That's, That's funny. pre. I'm it's not in our library. It's it. Well, it's in my library. <laughs> but usually, if you've done it, it ends up in our library too. Yeah. It, it, that one's pre Anna, I think. I think so too, because I don't remember this. Yeah. One. Really pretty, just chevron lace pattern some short rows to build up that center crescent. But the short rows appear to be all garter stitch, which is they are. ridiculously easy. Do you remember, does it start with the lace and then you do the short rows? Yeah, it starts at the bottom, which means it only gets faster from there. Right, because your rows get smaller. That's the cowl I'm working on right now. I'm I'm getting really close to. Nice. Yeah. And this one would be three skeins, and it's a free pattern. Okay, more colors. Would be really nice in this yarn. It would drape really well. Mine was a heavy worsted. It was kind of stiff. Um, Darla, it might have gone all digital, but I stopped caring about the magazines when they take away the print copy. Like, to me, they don't exist anymore because I like to be able to have my physical pattern. And even a lot of the digital ones, sometimes they've gone to this point where, like, you can't then print out the pattern mm -hmm. from the way it's formatted. And I'm like, but I need to write on it. Yeah. With the magazine, at least I could, you know, if I didn't want to wreck my magazine, I could make a photocopy for myself. Like, they took away all the joy that is a knitting magazine by making it digital, in my humble opinion. Then we have this gorgeous color 22, which is like that barn or brick red. It's just got a little hint of rust to it. But I like this one. It has really deep burgundy speckles for the darks. And then this soft, like this little fleck right here is a good spot to see it. This soft, almost blush color for highlights. So you're getting that really rich depth to the color. Almost a garnet. Also in the beautiful warm palette. We have color 25, which is like butterscotch or caramel. Can we have an ice cream sundae now, please? I know. I'm sorry. I keep talking about sugary things <laughs> because that's apparently oh, what my brain thinks about. I have liquid sundae right now. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's right. It's you a caramel one. Those, you do drink those ice cream drinks I from do. the coffee shop. I do. And no, because I know somebody's going to ask now that I said coffee shop. There's still not They're a coffee not shop open. next door. We have doubts now. But the barber shop is open. Yes, if you know anybody who needs a good haircut, the barber shop is open. It's super nice in there. Um, <laughs> last night, so this is funny. I was a little embarrassed when he came out, but Danielle was just like, oh, hi. Because she's <laughs> met him before because it's the neighbor. Uh, but we're like peeking around through the gaps in the blinds to see how close to done they are in there. And he came out the door while we were like, <laughs> what you doing? We were like the creepy nosy neighbor. Um, and he let us come in and look. They've got these beautiful gray tile floors. Um, kind of the rustic frames around the mirrors. These big, like the husky tool cabinets. Oh, nice. 
supplies, it's really nice in there. Karen said it had, like, tattoo parlor vibes the way the chairs were, because they're, like, the more old-fashioned looking oh, nice. barber chairs. It's so nice in there. If you know anybody who needs a good barber, I'm thinking next door is the place. I don't know the name of it yet. He said his sign is coming in, like, two weeks. So, I'll tell you later. Lisa, it is where the yoga studio used to be, like... Next to where we our, used to when be. You go out our front door, two doors down on the left. I think it's going to be a great shop. You should send your son there. I'm sure he needs a barber once in a while. <laughs> Mr. Mustache Contest. Mustache, beard. Beard. Whole thing. Facial hair contest. Let's just go with that. Okay, that was a random aside. Can't be helped. This is color 75, which is a beautiful, cool blue in like that slightly aqua sky blue. It's not accurate on my screen at all. It's close on our monitor. It's a little grayed out, so you'll have to trust me that Better, it's a but... slightly aqua sky blue. Almost that tropical like blue curacao fruity drink color. We'll just say Chris L, you want this one. <laughs> I'll, I'll package it up and have it ready for you tomorrow. Um, yes, the barber shop is where the thrift store was. And we have no idea on the coffee shop. We have doubts of its existence. Yeah. So we're sorry. We think you'll have to continue with the mainstream coffee shops of your choice. Mm. Chris said okay. <laughs> Call us after the video, Chris. Come I'll, on I'll down, wrap Chris. it up. <laughs> You're, she's local. She can come by and visit us. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Ombre coming up. Which, Chris, when you come in, remind me, I have your stuff to give back to you in my car. She loaned me some spray for lubing up, like, the lock. Because mm. the locks on my house were all getting to where I was like, I can't lock my door. <laughs> I can't it get in. <laughs> no, I couldn't lock it. No. Like, the little... You know the little thing that you pinch to turn the lock on the handle? That little tiny mm, Yes, yes. It was like... I don't have a lot of grip strength with <laughs> just this part of my fingertips. So it catching was not working and it worked. My lock works. Like it just has a little click to it now, which probably means something's breaking in there, but we're gonna ignore that. Color 14, which is very like kind of avocado with these moss green shadows in here. It's Noro's version of Scorched Lime. Yeah, basically. It is almost the same shade. I just love the colors. I'm going to put it right here because that's the closest place it fits in ombre the colors because I can't not. I apologize in advance for anybody who hates me for <laughs> tempting you with ombres. I might have given myself too many patterns this morning. I, I just want to see something done in one of each color, all in the same project. Not I a have full skein worth, but calls for multiple colors. Not that many, but you know, it, it eh, can work. It's a guideline. We, we can, we can make it. Ooh, work. that's fun. This Asherton reversible scarf, which she actually has a matching hat pattern as well, but it's like double moss stitch here, stockinette, reverse stockinette to create this really cool, this one's very like MC Escher kind of texture because it gives that almost three-dimensional blocks look. And it's a free pattern. She didn't break down the yardage, but for an average sized scarf, three skeins. Two to three skeins, depending on how long you like your scarves but I do like that there's a matching hat. I think if you got three skeins and did the hat first and then mm. just use whatever's left of that skein and the other two for a scarf, it would be a perfect match. Then I kind of found an oldie but a goodie, which this one was kind of BA2. Oh yeah. So I've never actually knit this one, so it might have to go in my queue. This is the tea leaves cardigan. I remember us having a tiny tea leaves sample in the store. True. 
but it's got just a little bit of that ruching stitch pattern in the yoke like you see on our sheared scarf. Just a couple buttons or leave them off if you're never gonna button your sweater. That's how I roll. You can kind of see, even though it's a dark color, you can kind of see the ruching a little better in this one. But it has sizes from 34 to 48 and would take six to, I think, eight skeins off of my quick mental math. Then, okay, next is the one that I'm thinking could be a multicolor Ooh, one. Yeah. It calls for three colors, but you could do all the colors and just do every section different. But this is The Golden Hour by Andrea Mowry. I hadn't seen this one before, but it's got fun different sections of mosaic knitting, baubles, like the double yarn over eyelet lace, so it's bigger holes down here, and then a super dramatic pico bind off. Like it looks like just pico on top of mm -hmm. pico with no space in between. And I really like that. I'll let you block it for me. Okay. She's, she's the pico pro. I just turn on a movie and just start Pin and Picos. Like here's one she did in like gray and charcoal and gold versus the other one was like peach and silver and gold. But so it was, it would be two skeins each if you do three colors. If you wanna go crazy and do all the colors like my brain is tempted to do, then I'd say one of each, should be plenty. Go crazy, it's worth it. I may need to do that. Okay. Okay, let me show you one more color and then I have a couple more patterns. So last but not least, the color that goes with everything and is correctly numbered in my opinion. <laughs> number color one. number one. Yay. The undyed natural cream color of the fiber. Eh, stockinette backwards isn't that hard. It's just pearl on the right side and knit on the wrong side. It's the same stitch. I went a little crazy with the patterns this morning, so let me get my last couple links in there for you guys. Some days it's easy to go crazy finding it was patterns. Rabbit hole this morning. Mm -hmm. Like I had to like go. No, okay, stop. <laughs> you have other things to do. Walk away. Walk away from the patterns. So this is actually designed out of Kashirukuru. This is Celeste by Rosemary Drysdale. It's a really like small basket weave because it's only two stitches wide, but it gives. You can see this yarn gives really good stitch definition for the textured stitch patterns. And this is one skein. So a almost what we call our necklace length. It's like halfway between gator and necklace of 27 inch circumference by eight inches tall is just one skein. I keep thinking their little tag is a leather tag. Right, it, it is. <laughs> the symbol on the pattern is positioned almost where you'd put the little leather tag on the edge of your project. Which, that does really jazz up your project to the next level. I put leather tags on everything now. And I started putting them in the backs of my sweaters, like the little square tags or those made it for myself ones. Yeah. Because a lot of these round yoke sweaters, where the heck is the front and the back? Like you have to find this little tiny detail of where like your beginning around mm -hmm. was to know. And I know that means it also wouldn't matter if I put it on backwards, but it we, matters. We, it bothers us. We just need to do it. It's a neuroses. It matters. Okay, one last pattern. This is Molly by Erin Ruth. This beautiful like antler cable pattern. Like they call it horseshoe. Um, and then this like textured gar one by one garter rib and look how pretty like even the top has oh, the wow. decreases 
star down very nicely in the texture and the, you can kind of see the cables just get smaller and smaller, which I love that. I, that's what I want in a hat pattern is I want the texture to kind of seamlessly disappear into the decreases and not be like, look, there's a circle on the top of my head. <laughs> Cause some of them just do that. They switch to stockinette and then there's this, this flat spot in the middle. And this one, also a free pattern. It's this little link right here, takes you right to it. And that would be two skeins to make it because it is a slouchy hat. If you wanted to make it more of a beanie, you could probably get away with one on the smallest size on the pattern. But just take two, they're small. Yeah. Yes, this yarn is so delicious. And like that golden hour, it's like there's so many color combos you could do. Like you could do this. Really any of the combos of two that I did, if you did, did with color number one. So like these two, if you're a pink person, the two pinks, the purple and blue. the sky blue and green, but I mean, you could go totally rogue from there. Go kind of Natik palette <laughs> if you don't want any white. Ooh, that's fun. I think these three would be pretty. Right there. We just narrowed it down to just three combos. Mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> okay. So that is all of the beautiful Kasha Rupuru that we have in stock for you guys. I was so excited about the finished origami scarf that I'm like, okay, we have to show them all the pretty colors that they can do. And then let me link to our calendar so we can go talk about classes and you guys can access the ones that make you go, ooh, I must knit that. This one, we are going to teach you how to do the little Fair Isle hearts. So you'll get to learn how to carry the yarn across longer sections of stitches. Danielle's gonna teach you how to tack those down so that they do not get all crazy loopy on the inside. Uh, your pre-work for class, which you could totally do tonight if you sign up today, is to knit the ribbing and the stockinette section. But if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm busy till nine o'clock tonight, there's no way. The class is recorded, so sign up anyways. You can watch it after the fact, or you can still attend live if you want, just so that that way you can ask questions if you think of things. Totally worth it, and you get an adorable hat out of the deal. And in two skeins of worsted weight yarn, you have enough to make two hats this is the size that the pattern calls toddler and then this is the size that we added notes for that is actually toddler size because they have big headed toddlers <laughs> i'm just saying because it fits my head this fits me mm. i tried it on then coming up on saturday we are starting our shorty socks class lots of you were like okay we want the short socks so we're going to teach you how to do this heel tab that's folded over. So there's like, you can see there's no ribbing on the top of the sock. And then we're gonna teach you how to do a heel flap and heel turn. In the second session, you're gonna have some stockinette to do, some toe decreases, and then we're going to teach you how to Kitchener closed the toe so that you have a seamless line here, no ridge rubbing the top of your foot. Cause I don't know about you guys, but the ridges equal no fun and you'll have enough time between classes that you can definitely do the second sock like if you don't have a spare set of your circulars or double points of choice slide all your stitches on and knits that fit cord and <laughs> do the second sock but the sooner you repeat the techniques the better they stick in your brain so cast on and do the second sock as soon as possible 
Then we have coming up on Tuesday, the 24th, the Antithesis Cowl. This is our pattern designed out of Silky Twist and optional beaded silken sequins. Uh, it is a really fun version of a ripple stitch that has these textural ridges in the middle here. So it gives it just a little more interest than a standard ripple. And one skein of Silky Twist with or without one skein of beaded silk sequins is all you need. Then on Friday, January 27th, we have the Bias Lace and Stripes Scarf. This one is also done out of Silky Twist. One skein each of two colors. It is worsted weight, so you could definitely use the Kashirukuru if you fell in love with two colors today and can't decide between them. Use that instead. And this one has just a tiny bit of pre-work. Uh, we're going to have you cast on with some waste yarn and spare needles to do a second piece so that that way in class we can teach you this striping on your scarf and then we can teach you the lace striping on your practice piece. Then on Friday, February 3rd, we have one of our fun $5 pop-up classes. This is the Facile Cowl very easy stitch pattern, some stockinette, some eyelet lace, um, and then we'll talk about how to put the ends together because you knit this one like a scarf. So we'll talk about how you put the ends together to make it into a cowl. And then last but not least is the sheared scarf on Tuesday, February 7th. This one is very good for those like beginners where you're like, I've knit, I've purled, what, I don't know how to do anything else. This one's going to teach you how to do a basic increase and decrease, which gives you that beautiful texture of the ruching. And that one was done with one skein of Noro Uchiwa. But it is worsted weight, so it would also work with Kasha Rukuru. You would need four skeins. Okay, let me pop my links in here for what we're wearing. And then we'll talk about them. Okay, so I am wearing a sweater pattern called Kentia. It is a top down in the round. You do this beautiful lace section first. The increases are kind of built into the lace, so it's very easy to follow. Um, and then you have a stockinette body. It does have some short rows after the lace to lengthen the back if you want, which I did do because it kind of helps it stay down in the back when you do things like bend over and pick stuff up off the floor. I'm not calling for a phone call that says U.S. government for the call. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I don't think so. Uh, they can leave a message. Yeah. But really fun for lace. Very easy lace. Like, it's not, it's really, this one was really fun. This one languished in my stash for a while because I was at the knit, knit, knit part. That's right. And then we had a machine knitting day at the boutique and we all did things. We all did things. I finished the bottom of this one and one other sweater because I tend to get distracted once I hit the stockinette part and <laughs> then they sit in my stash. And this one was pre me thinking about machine knitting everything. So it That's just been a sat while. there and sat there. So it was like, okay, let's just throw it on there and get her done. And then I did do a split hem on this one because once you do it once, you're like, okay, it just needs to be on everything. Yeah. Because then at the holidays, when I eat too much food, <laughs> it still fits. Because it all goes down here pretty much, whether we like it or not. Yeah. And then Susan is wearing something very pretty. I think this was this your first one of her patterns um 
I feel like close to it. Who did it? <laughs> I don't know who did it. Casapinka? Oh I'm just gonna hide. Now. No, we can't show them your shawl if you walk away. Come back. Uh, I would have to look at my pattern history. I don't know. But this is short rose, which is R O S E. So I had to do pink and green. Beautiful chevron lace that is even short road as well because you can see that like this little garter line stops here and then the next one stops over there and then the next one wraps around her. But very fun. You can do it in just two colors. You can do it in mini skeins for your ombre. I just saw Whatever makes you happy. And apparently I have to hurry up and get off here so <laughs> Susan can buy yarn. Alright everyone, that is going to be it for this morning's video. If I missed any of your questions throughout the comments, just give us a call and or email us and we will be happy to help you. I don't intentionally ignore anyone, but the messages scroll by really fast. Um, and we will be open from 11 to 5 today and we'll see you guys again tomorrow at 10am. Have a good day. Bye.